Well, I think definitely the way that people are going to approach the, the exhibition when you come to the top of the stairs, you're submerged into Sankey Walker. There's an awful lot going on. It's a kind of like a platform for both of us to really engage with the viewer physically as well as just kind of being able to have a, an understanding of material all orientated in a new geography. And I think that geography will trigger people's awareness of how kind of two people are coming from very different backgrounds. I came to live in Ireland 25 years ago. I grew up in Australia and was very affected by nature and the way that the trees grow so big and then they fall on their sides and then there's just this monumental kind of monster skeleton lying in the landscape. I'm also very much affected by the experience of having my own body. So there are these two kind of landscape and bodily connections that I like to draw in my work, which I found maybe 10 years ago when I was involved in renovating a house and the plumbing just was kind of, was kind of spewing out because the builder didn't want to touch it. My kind of great love for how beastly, I guess, the skeletons of trees are and the way that we kind of plumb and electrify our lives. Growing up, and throughout my practice, scale has been a major component of my life and my awareness of being able to navigate my surroundings. Dimensionality and looks at how to navigate a dimension and how to navigate a material. And all of this is done through a quite a minimalist approach, but added with a kind of theatrical, personal intervention. This new adventure with Catherine has been an extraordinary experience. Yeah, I mean, it was clear from the get-go that we were both concerned with architecture and how we interact with architecture as humans. I guess as well, we did sort of see that there was a kind of element of whimsy. I know that you like kind of playing with the viewer a bit and there's a sort of a, a game a little bit. Well, I was just really, really interested in the way that you approached the natural environment with the very kind of direct and deliberate plumbing devices and kind of re-articulating how we understand our relationship to the situation that's been here on the earth. So that linked with my exercises in perception of scale. The space of the gallery was where the nexus activation was going to come in always. There is um, a fireplace that engages with the side of the fireplace, but it comes right out into the room. Because I'm interested in the way that trees and plants communicate with each other under the earth, there is just that exploration of totally invisible entanglement that is beneath our feet that we'll never understand. Well, the drawing, it's an AutoCAD drawing, and it's printed on a very long sheet of paper. It's kind of like that, as you say, what is entanglement beneath us. And in this case, it was actually put before us in the land and how it is kind of structured with latitude and how that latitude is an approach to scale. It's installed in, the, in Gallery 1 at a low level at Corbin scale, which is a rule that I use it with. So, breather, I cut it out of a shed. A lot of it was kind of dead and it kind of became bigger and bigger because I kept cutting more and more out of it. I had all these plans and then Corbin came along and said, no, no, I'm going to do, I'm going to do my, I'm going to do something with it, you know? And then it just kind of, it was like an alchemy. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Because of the beautiful length of the vine and orientating everybody through the space as well as, you know, defining the space. My initial idea to demarcate kind of certain areas of it with this rectilinear object that arcs over it. So the scale of that and with the mirror behind it, the other wall, they're all at this kind of low level and it's all about redefining this very gigantic space where those interruptions kind of can also be kind of I suppose uh, introductions. These glass stacks I've spent a lot of time making uh, over the years of different types of glass so that the edge becomes the surface and the surface itself becomes a, a means for refracting light. The void is hugely important in the in the space and in the stack um, and as you say they are drawings they're just like because they're cut and you can see how the glass is made and how it's a cooling system of when it's blown these are all hand blown and then i just stack them yeah the pigeons yeah like i mean it is it's a com complete 
new piece, very, very different to anything else I've done. It was a very bizarre little object that came to you every night in the hospital. And it's the number of nights that I spent in, in Cork University Hospital after a, a spinal injury. There is a lot of humour in it, but there's, a, there's an emptiness that needs to be filled, but also it needs to be kind of recognised for its function, for ability and awareness of trying to coordinate myself to that level of function in getting from one place to another or you know embracing a, a building like this has many different obstacles but it also has many different kind of uh, components that are not necessarily obvious to an able-bodied person let's say and I think it's a very good kind of counterbalance to, to these guys and also just kind of in, in terms of the whole direction of the room and bringing it into to gallery three to Catherine's installation in there the Swallow is the name of the artwork that uh, incorporates a bathroom sink module. These modules are like organelles actually inside our own domestic environment and they function and they do you know really complex jobs that are to do with you know water and flowing and supply and waste and so that kind of fascinated me but it's also that sense of swallowing something that's very difficult and that actually it's not it's malfunctioning and it's our own discomfort sometimes with our own bodies and our own experience in the world it links with the sound piece with a kind of site specific appropriation i've made of the of the chimney breast in, in that room. The way that a building fabric can is kind of constantly being adjusted and also just that thing where we want to kind of hide from the electrics and the plumbing and the mess of livingness, you know, and, and how we have to kind of clamp that down and box contain it off it. And, and contain it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think then at the end when they, they as you say, go into the swallow and what is what has been swallowed, who's been swallowed? You know, are you being swallowed up or, are you, or can you swallow this? It was very experimental collaboration where, where it's arrived at now. It really speaks a lot about our individual works, but also how they can be combined together as well. So it's good. I think people will come away from it with a lot of questions. I think that's great. I think there's space for the viewer to kind of meander and, you know, I, I, what I love about the gallery space is that you, you bring your own narrative, you bring your own experience and, uh, and that, that's as many narratives as, as there are for the artwork. Yeah. Relocate me. Strain bin me. Blast me. Change me. Swallow me. Swirl into me. Drill through me.